Please, not him. Do not allow that man to come near me, Caroline pleaded upon seeing the doctor in charge of her delivery. At a critical moment in her journey, a plot thick with guilt and resentment unfolds, putting not only her own life, but also that of her child in the hands of a man she despised. Hello, my friends. I am Linda, and this is the Linda's Stories channel. I hope you enjoy this story. Caroline was nearing the last month of her pregnancy. In a few weeks, she would embrace her long-awaited child. Her husband, Arthur, always attentive and perceptive to Caroline's needs, proposed a delightful plan to make that weekend unforgettable, a stay at a charming inn in a quaint small town, a peaceful retreat. This small town held a special place in Caroline's heart. It was where, throughout her childhood and adolescence, her family used to spend their summer vacations. Her grandparents had lived there all their lives, but since her grandmother's death, she hadn't revisited those landscapes. For Arthur, offering this getaway seemed like the perfect opportunity for the couple to enjoy some intimate moments before the nights became longer and the routines more demanding with the arrival of the baby. Hmm, I'm not sure, Arthur. Despite the good memories, the last time we were there... Caroline's voice faltered, a lump forming in her throat as she remembered a turbulent recent past. I know, my love, Arthur responded wrapping her in an embrace that seemed to want to shield her from the outside world. But you've always loved that place. Let's focus on the good times. It will be our little paradise, just ours once more. Caroline, already worn out by the expectations and preparations of the past months, truly longed for a breather and some time dedicated exclusively to her husband's company. The idea of a romantic weekend sounded like an irresistible invitation to alleviate the tensions. It was a serene Saturday morning, and the couple's car glided smoothly along the road bordered by small farms and vast golden fields of crops. As the landscape unrolled before the window, Caroline's memories also began to unfold. The recollections of joyful summers began to fill her thoughts, but they also brought with them the shadow of a recent episode that disturbed her peace. As they drew closer, Caroline could see in the distance the rooftops of the small town's houses. The old wooden bridge over the river that cut through the area, marking the only entrance to the city, appeared ahead, acting as a portal to that paradise. Arthur, do you mind if we stop at the town cemetery? I'd like to leave some flowers on my grandmother's grave, said Caroline, her soft voice carrying a weight of unresolved memories. Arthur squeezed his wife's hand in response, his expression filled with understanding and support. Of course I don't mind, he replied in a reassuring voice heading towards the Old Town Cemetery. Upon arrival, the woman walked slowly among the graves until she found her grandmother's. She had not returned to the cemetery since the funeral, which took place over five years ago. Now, standing before the grave adorned with worn inscriptions, she was finally able to pay her respects. She delicately placed the flowers on the headstone, allowing herself a moment for reflection and goodbye. After some time, the couple continued to the inn, a charming place that promised to be the perfect setting for the continuation of their special weekend. The day was filled with strolls through the quaint city streets and tastings of local dishes. The weather was ideal, with a gentle sun inviting serenity and relaxation, helping them both disconnect from usual concerns. As the day waved goodbye, a soft rain began to fall, setting the rhythm of the night with the soothing sound of droplets hitting the window. The melody of the rain seemed to compose a lullaby. However, what no one could anticipate was that this peaceful melody was about to gain dramatic chords, turning a simple rain into an unexpected event. As the night progressed, the rain intensified, quickly turning into a major storm. Thunder rumbled and lightning sliced through the dark sky, awakening Caroline and Arthur, who had been asleep until then. The sound of the storm was accompanied by hurried and alarmed footsteps echoing through the corridors of the inn, creating an atmosphere of urgency and concern. Arthur, driven by a protective instinct, got up and opened the door to their room. The hallway was bustling with guests dragging luggage and talking in worried tones. Arthur approached a hurriedly passing employee and asked, What's going on? The employee, with a look of distress, stopped to reply, his face marked by concern. We're getting reports that the storm is causing the river to rise rapidly. If we don't leave town now, we might get trapped. The river is threatening to overflow and cover the only bridge that provides access to the place. 
Caroline joined Arthur at the door, listening to the explanation. The fear of being isolated in that small town amidst a storm was growing within her. Quickly, they began to organise to leave. The already tense situation rapidly transformed into a critical emergency, especially for Caroline, who, being pregnant and vulnerable, began to feel the physical effects of extreme stress. Her blood pressure rose, an understandable reaction given the growing anxiety and chaos around them. The situation was deteriorating by the minute. The street in front of the inn was already beginning to fill with water, and soon enough, the flood invaded the ground floor of the establishment. Luggage was abandoned in the hallways as guests hurried towards their cars, many of which started to speed away in a disordered stampede, trying to escape the advancing waters. Amidst the confusion, Caroline began to feel visibly ill, her breathing becoming heavy and irregular, a concerning sign in her condition. It was then that an even more alarming piece of news echoed among the already terrified guests. The bridge, the only exit from the village, had succumbed to the force of the waters, torn from its foundation by the relentless power of the storm. Realising the gravity of the situation and the immediate need for medical attention for Caroline and the baby, Arthur made the brave decision to face the storm and take her to the only available hospital in town. As they raced against time, the worry and nervousness increased, and Caroline eventually fainted along the way. Upon arriving at the hospital, the scene was desolate. The place seemed practically abandoned. Arthur, carrying Caroline in his arms, rushed in, calling for help. A nurse quickly provided a stretcher and helped to settle Caroline. Where is everyone? Arthur asked. All the patients were evacuated as the storm began to intensify. Only I and one more doctor stayed, replied the nurse as they moved swiftly through the empty hospital corridors. At that moment, Dr. Arnold appeared, a serious yet calm demeanour. He immediately began to examine Caroline, who was still unconscious. Your wife is in labour, announced the doctor, astonishing Arthur even further. What was already an emergency situation now transformed into an even more critical scenario with Caroline going into premature labour, possibly precipitated by the stress and tension of the day. Caroline struggled to regain consciousness, her body still enveloped in the fog of fainting. Upon opening her eyes, she found herself facing Dr. Arnold, and instantly, a flood of memories hit her like a blow. Her muscles tensed and a muffled scream escaped her lips. Not him, she exclaimed, trying to break free from the arms holding her. Get this man away from me. He killed my grandmother. I won't allow this drunk to touch me or my son. He will kill us too. Resentment boiled within Caroline, an old wound that dated back more than five years. It was New Year's Eve. Caroline and her family were celebrating the holidays in that town, at a local club. Music filled the air, mixed with the tempting aromas of food and drink, while locals and tourists surrendered to the joy of the occasion. The euphoria of the party was abruptly interrupted by a growing commotion. In the centre of the hall, Caroline's grandmother lay on the floor, a victim of a sudden illness, her body succumbing to a heart attack. Panic quickly spread among those present, clamouring for a doctor. Then, someone spotted Dr Arnold among the crowd. Desperate pleas echoed through the hall, but the doctor refused to respond to the call. Defying his objections, someone grabbed him by the arm and dragged him toward the fallen elderly woman. However, before he could reach her, his own instability brought him down, revealing his drunkenness. Interminable minutes later, an ambulance finally arrived, but it was too late to save Caroline's grandmother. She blamed the doctor. If he had been sober and had acted, perhaps her grandmother would still be alive. My love, everyone else is gone, only Dr. Arnold remains. We have to trust him, her husband said calmly, trying to soothe Caroline. Despite all the resentment boiling inside her, Caroline knew that her life and her sons were now in the hands of that doctor. Dr. Arnold, with all his experience, began the procedures for the delivery, coordinating with the nurse. In a matter of minutes, the baby was born. A moment of tension hung in the air when the baby did not cry immediately, but the doctor acted quickly, suctioning the amniotic fluid the baby had swallowed during delivery. Soon, the vigorous crying of the baby echoed through the room, bringing palpable relief to everyone present. To Caroline, the doctor who had seemed in her mind to be the very personification of death, was now offering her a new beginning in life. The one she blamed for her grandmother's death had become an instrument of life, guiding her through the process of childbirth. While the storm raged mercilessly outside, 
A moment of calm and serenity settled in Caroline's heart at that moment. In her hospital bed, enveloped in the quietude of postpartum recovery, Caroline heard the comforting words of her husband, Arthur. Caroline, while I was talking to the nurse, she told me something interesting. All the patients and doctors were evacuated except for Dr. Arnold. He chose to stay in the city, believing someone might need his help. He made that choice, my dear. The doctor is a good man. You need to let go of that resentment. That night, your grandmother passed away. He was off duty. He had every right to relax and have fun. Sometimes seeking a culprit can soothe the pain of loss, but in this case, Dr. Arnold is blameless. Deep down, Caroline always knew this, but it was as though she needed a villain to make sense of a story that, in reality, was just a tragic accident. When the doctor came to check if she and the baby were doing well, Caroline felt it was time to release the burden she had carried for over five years. This time, when she looked at the doctor's face, she no longer felt the same anger as before. Instead, the serene expression of the doctor now brought her a sense of calm. Dr. Arnold, I wanted to thank you for what you did today, but I also want to apologize. I know you were not to blame for my grandmother's death. The doctor just smiled, accepting her words in silence, and thus, in the midst of a stormy whirlwind, Caroline found peace. By the hands of one whom she had considered the harbinger of death, she welcomed life. Caroline's journey reminds us that sometimes we are so immersed in our own pain and loss that we look for villains where there are none. It's easy to assign blame and responsibility to someone, especially when we are dealing with the weight of grief. However, by doing so, we might lose sight of life's complexity and the unpredictable nature of events. There isn't always a clear villain to blame. Sometimes it's just the inscrutable course of life that brings us challenges and tragedies. Recognizing this allows us to cultivate greater understanding and compassion towards others and ourselves, and empowers us to find peace and acceptance amid adversity. If you enjoyed, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment with a number from one to five to let us know how much you liked the story. Also, watch the video that is currently on your screen. See you soon.